Hey, I'm Brian Van, sportbiketrackyear.com. Today we're going to break down the Driven DXS spool install on our 2022 Yamaha R7 STG project bike. Tools that you need. You need a five millimeter T-handle. Definitely need some blue thread locker. And if you plan to lift the bike after you install the stools, you're also going to need a stand. Okay, so like we said in the opener of this video, spools are important. If you're gonna service your bike on your own, and odds are if you bought something like this Yamaha R7, you're probably gonna do a lot of the maintenance and modifications to it on your own. That's a big part of the hobby, one of the most enjoyable parts in my personal opinion. Spools are key, spools and a rear stand. We've got one of our old pit, pit bull stands over there. We're gonna show you how to use that as we go through this video. But these are key. And when we do this video, we're gonna operate from the perspective that you're brand new to this. This isn't like your 10th bike. Maybe this is even your first bike or your first sport bike. The spools on the R7 are gonna be installed in the forward most hole here on the swing arm. That boss is welded to the swing arm, super strong. We're gonna use the driven spools for this application. They come in multiple colors. We're going with the blue. It's gonna look kick ass on the bike. Anytime you install spools, and you can see there's already some on there, and it's because we had to redo this because the first time I squeezed it, literally it shot all over the place. A lot of pent up frustration in that bottle. Got a five millimeter T handle. How much torque are we going to use? We're going to use this much torque. The reason we use the thread locker is these stay in there for a long time. This isn't the kind of thing you take off and put back on very often. And you wanna make sure that you don't lose them. Can't tell you how many times at the racetrack I've seen people go out with two spools and come back in with one because it fell off. Well, that's less of a problem if you have a street bike with a kickstand, I can assure you it's a pretty massive problem if you're at the racetrack and you're using tire warmers and need both of those spools to interact with your rear stand and lift and support the bike. So same deal here. We're going to apply a reasonable amount of torque to this. The thread locker will do all the rest. Now for the rear stand. There's a gap that's adjustable. Every rear stand is gonna be similar in design. On the Pitbull stand, 19 millimeter wrench, you're able to loosen the top supports, adjust them to width as needed. See where we sit here with our R7. Can't remember which bike this was last used on. Whichever one it was. That is the right width. Up she goes. These are strong enough, you can sit on the seat while it's on the stand, as long as you have a good quality stand. And if you're curious about what a quality stand is, Pitbull, quality stand. Woodcraft, quality stand. From there, there's things that are middle of the road that are pretty good. And then of course, there's the knockoff stuff that is super modular and comes in many pieces. That stuff's something you really wanna kind of avoid. We also recommend investing in a quality stand. That's something you'll have from bike to bike to bike to bike, because most people, once they start doing this, they end up doing it literally for decades. A piece of equipment like this pit bull stand or a woodcraft rear stand, those are gonna stay with you literally for decades and perform flawlessly. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all this stuff myself. I wanna make sure you get the same result from your project we do ours. Thank <laughs> you.